The following message is a production of Tony Broom Ministries. And the subject today is looks like fire to me. There is what is known as prophetic fire. Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 4, 13 and 27 talks about this prophetic fire. There are places in the Bible that you look for comfort. Sometimes you look in the Psalms. Sometimes you look for strength in the Gospels and the Acts of the Apostles. Sometimes you find teaching and encouragement in the Epistles like Romans and Galatians and Ephesians and others. Sometimes you like to read stories in the Bible like Moses, Daniel in the lion's den, the three Hebrew children. But there's always a place that you can go. Usually there's a place that, or places that you go in the Bible that may mean something to you that might not mean so much to someone else. But God uses that portion of Scripture in the Bible that when life just does not make sense and things just are not turning out right, you can always go to that particular place, chapter, or book in the Bible, and you can find it. And every time you go there, you will get that same strength, that same encouragement, that same power and blessing that you got the first time. For me, one of these places is the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel talks to us about prophecy. It talks to us about vision. It talks to us about fire. You've got to have fire in your life. You've got to have a foundation on which to stand on. It's got to be more than just religion. It's got to be more than just knowing a preacher's name. It's got to be more than just signing a card and shaking a hand. You got to have a foundation of fire. You got to have something to stand on when the storms of life are raging. The scripture here says, And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. You talking about power. When this man of God saw the fire and glory of God, it was like a cloud of fire, and he said it was like enfolding itself. To me, that means like it was wrapping itself around itself. Just talking about wrapped up, tied up, and tangled all up in Jesus. I'm talking about the fire of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the prophetic fire. When this man of God saw the visions like he saw by the river Kibar, which means force or strength. You need some strength in your life. You need some force in your life. It's not no some little patty cake, patty cake, break a little man religion. You got to have the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost holding on your hand. You need some fire in your life. Something that'll get you out of bed on Sunday morning. Something that'll make you pay your tithes. Something that'll cause you to love your neighbor. Something that'll cause you to win the loss for Jesus Christ and be a witness for him. Something that will cause you to live a holy life. He saw this cloud. He saw this fire enfolding itself. It had color like amber and it was out of the midst of the fire. There's power in the Christian life. That doesn't mean that you skip around on clouds of ease all the time. That doesn't mean that you don't have any storms in your life. But you have a prophetic fire. God spoke to this man and he told him no matter what happens, no matter if they listen to you or not, no matter what I take it to do or not, no matter if the instructions you get seem to be so crazy and so weird that you don't think you can make it. When things get bad and things get worrisome and it just gets all tipsy turvy and you don't know which way to go, you got to look back and you got to see that vision of fire. you got to look back and you got to wrench back in your toolbox as it were and have something to get a hold to. you got to know what this fire is all about. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth lightning. I'm talking about power. I'm talking about presentation. 
Here was four living creatures that were made for the express purpose of worshiping God. They had strange looking faces all about them. And they didn't, they didn't have to turn as they went because whichever way they wanted to go, they would just go. So many times in our life we have to turn this way and we have to turn that way and we have to turn another way. And sometimes we just don't know which way to turn. When the fire of God gets a hold of you like it got a hold of them living creatures, they didn't have to turn. They just thought about where they wanted to go and they was there. If they wanted to go to man's face way, they went that way. If they wanted to go the ox face way, they went that way. If they wanted to go the eagle's face way, they went that way. Because that's the way it's going to be when you get to heaven as a glorified Christian. You won't have to plan to take a trip. You'll already be in the place you want to be. But where do you want to go within that city? You just have to think about it and you're already there. That's a glorified body. That's when the price of gasoline is going to be zero a gallon. Because you don't need none. This special presentation... And he saw it time and time again. And every time he saw it, he falls on his face. And he says, this is like the living creatures that I saw in the vision. And I saw as the color of amber. And he gives that color of amber again. As the appearance of fire ran about within it. From the appearance of his loins even upward. And from the appearance of his loins even downward. I saw as it were the appearance of fire. And it had brightness round about. I'm talking about this special person. I'm talking about the great I am. I'm talking about the Holy One of Israel. I'm talking about Jehovah. I'm talking about God. I'm talking about God the Father. I'm talking about God the Son. I'm talking about God the Holy Ghost. Praise God. I'm talking about the Son. I'm talking about this special person that he saw a man and it looks like fire from his loins upward. And it looks like fire from his loins downward. And if he had fire from his loins upward and fire from his loins downward, looks like to me he's got fire all around. It looks like fire to me, brothers and sisters. I'm talking about a gospel that works. I'm talking about a gospel of power. I'm talking about a gospel of fire. I'm talking about something that will help you in the midnight hour. Yes. Woo, glory to God. I'm talking about this person that offers salvation to the world. Prophetic fire. Jesus comes as a fulfillment of all prophecy. And he fulfilled God's word. God said, if you keep my law, I'll keep all sickness away from you. Guess what? They couldn't keep the law, so sickness didn't stay away. And that's what it is all about now. When sickness is invading the world, disease, all kind of natural disasters and things is going on. But I got news for the devil. Jesus fulfilled the law for me. I can't keep the law. I couldn't do it. The apostles couldn't do it. The Jewish rabbis couldn't do it. The people of Israel couldn't do it. But Jesus came and he kept the law for me. He fulfilled all prophecy. So he's my healing. He's my salvation. He's my atonement. He's my everything. Providential fire. Daniel chapter 3. Story of the three Hebrew children. If you don't worship this image I've set up, said Nebuchadnezzar, you're going to be thrown into the midst of a burning fire furnace. They said, it might be. But our God's able to deliver us. And even if He doesn't, let it be known to you, O King, that we will not serve your images. We will not bow to your images and serve your gods. Daniel 3.27 And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Don't tell me my God didn't know what he's talking about this morning when he said the smell of fire will not even pass on you because God knows what his word said and God knows what's going to come forth. Oh, glory to God. Yeah, they took them up. They threw them in there. But the fire did not touch them because God is stronger than fire. God is stronger than wind. He's stronger than rain. He's stronger than all things. The angel of God, and that's Christ in the Old Testament. Christ himself goes into that fire with those three Hebrew boys, and he shelters them from that fire. He blows that fire back from them. We put three men in there, didn't we? Yeah, we did, King. He said, I see four men loose in the fire, walking around. And the form of the fourth one, fourth one is like the Son of God. 
You know why it was like the Son of God? Because that's who He is, the Son of God. God provides deliverance for His servants and a mighty witness for His holy name. He changed the king's word. King said, nobody's going to worship anything but me. That's what that image was. It was about him. That's what the world wants you to worship now. You worship some kind of politician. You worship some kind of king. You worship some kind of preacher. Even in the church, they want you to worship some kind of preacher. You know, you don't worship no preacher. You don't worship no pope. There's no hope in the pope. You worship Jesus Christ and him alone. The one that died for your sins on the old rugged cross and rose again. That's the one you worship. God changed the king's word. The king had to write it on the decree. The decree said if anybody worships any other, be thrown into the midst of a burning fire furnace. you got to worship this image I've made. Well, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't bend, they wouldn't bow, and they didn't burn, praise God. Looks like they would have known they'd come along with Daniel did the same thing in the lion's den, chapter 6. you got to worship and request from nobody else but the king within 30 days. Then he said, I think I can I feel a Holy Ghost prayer meeting coming on. He went and got into his chambers and he opened his windows toward Jerusalem and he prayed and gave thanks to God. They heard him. He said, Aha, we got you now, boy. Throw you into the lion's den. Well, they put him in, but the scripture tells us about it. And the chuck wagon gang sang about it. All night long, the lions never took a bite. God took away their appetite. <laughs> Daniel came forth out of that lion's den. Do you know that the fire was a protection for the Hebrew children, but the same fire burned up those who threw them in? In the same way in the lion's den, it was a pillow and a protection all night long for Daniel. But the ones who accused him, they threw them in there and they had a big meal off of them. I'm talking about providential fire. What about purifying fire? 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 7 says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than a gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. The same fire which tries our faith continues to purify our hearts and lives in sanctification. This is a fire. It may not be a blazing fire that you can see. It may not be a fiery furnace fire. It may not be a fire in a cloud enfolding itself. But you have a fire that's trying your faith. And the fire that tries your faith, our faith is so precious. We are so frivolous about our faith sometimes. And we need to realize that our faith is one of the most precious things that we have. And it says here that it's more precious than gold that perishes. Do almost anything to get silver and gold and that's going to pass away and your faith will live forever. Amen. Your faith will cause you to get answers from God. Your faith will cause you to lock the jaws of the lion or the devil. And your faith, you stand on your faith, you live by faith, we walk by faith. We talk by faith. We live in this world by faith. And even if your faith is tried, it will come forth like gold. Your faith is tried. Sanctification. Purifying of your faith. God is purifying His people. Getting us ready to go out of here. He's not going to take no dirty people out of here. No dirty church out of here. He's going to take a church that's spotless. And he's going to take a church that lives for God. A church that's a bride of Christ and made herself ready. What about Pentecostal fire? We think about Pentecost being a denomination. God is sending forth Pentecost across denominations. He's sending forth Pentecost into the Methodists. And praise God they need it. He's sending Pentecost into the Baptists. He's sending Pentecost across lines of denominational barriers. And you and I can't do it. If we do, we'll tear things up and make a mess. But God does it. He reaches out into the prisons. He reaches across walls. He reaches where places and people are hearing about the Word of God and hearing about faith, hearing about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, hearing about sanctification, and their hearts become hungry. And when the heart becomes hungry, God has a hungry heart and He can fill it with the Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, says John the Pentecostal Baptist. 
But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Oh, glory to God. We need this generation that we live in, the generation of people that are living now, the generation that's coming on. We need a baptism of fire. We need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We need something that'll work. We need something that'll just get you more than just into a church and make you feel good. We need something that'll change your life. We need something that'll heal the sick. We need something that'll raise the dead. We need something that'll cast out demons. We need something that'll cleanse lepers and cancers. I'm talking about the fire of the Holy Ghost. I baptize you with water into repentance. And that's a good thing to do, but he who comes after me, the Lord Jesus, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Acts chapter 2 verse 3 said, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. This is powerful. The power of the full gospel religion works, brothers and sisters. And you don't have to believe it just because I say it. You don't have to believe it just because some preacher says. You don't have to believe it just because somebody on TV says or somebody on radio, somebody on YouTube and the internet. You don't have to believe it because they say so. You read your Bible for yourself and you see what it tells you and what God tells you and you in His Word. When God says that fire appeared there, we may not see appearance of fire, but you're going to have fire in your life. If you have Pentecost, you're going to have fire. It said there appeared to them cloven tongues of fire and it sat upon each of them. Why did it sat upon each of them? Because you don't want nobody else's biscuit. You don't want to chaw them somebody else's fat back what they've been licking on. You want to have your own. That's why God comes to you individually. He saves you personally. He saves you individually. He sanctifies you individually. He baptizes you in the Holy Ghost individually. You have your own personal Pentecost. It's powerful and it's personal. It sat upon each of them. And if you read on, it'll tell you that they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. They were filled in the Holy Ghost, which is, equates to being baptized in the Holy Ghost. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We don't get hung up on the tongue, but tongues are a part of Pentecost. And you need the unknown tongue. When you get in trouble, people come and they say they've been filled with the Spirit. Then you never hear anything else of Pentecost out of them. We need to keep a hope to Pentecost. We need to keep a hope to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We need to keep a hope to the unknown tongue and let the unknown tongue keep a hope to us. And when you get in your place, wherever it is in church or wherever it is in your private chamber, and you start to pray and you start seeking the face of God, when you get in that place and you're praying, you need to pray as the Spirit leads you. Pray in tongues. Build yourself up in your most holy faith. We need the power of Pentecost to stand in this latter day in which we live. So many people are falling and going away from the faith, and we need something to be able to stand. Punishing fire. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is a bad kind of fire. It's prepared and it's perpetual. That means it lasts forever. God prepared hell just like He prepared heaven. Heaven is beautiful, beautiful. And hell is ugly, ugly. But it's got fire. It's an everlasting burning fire. It's fire that burns you. It's fire that hurts you. But you don't just burn up. You don't just sizzle out. You burn forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Every day, every night, endless, perpetual, throughout the ages of eternity. You keep on burning and burning and burning and gnashing of teeth and weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the Bible talks about it. It says that the fearful are there. The unbelieving are there. The all liars are there. The people who are idolaters and sorcerers and those who are bent on going the world's way. The extortioners, the homos, all those who don't get right with God. It doesn't matter what kind of sin you put on it. You might be a good church person, but if you don't get born again and get right with God, you're going to end up in the same place with the murderers and the thieves and all those drunkards and people who are going to the same hell. Hell ain't got no two stories. You get up here on the ninth floor and it gets kind of cool. No, there ain't no cool place in hell. It's all hot. 
Hell is hot and it's hot as hell. That's what it is. It's hot. When you go to hell, it's a prepared place. It's prepared for the devil and his angels. God doesn't want anybody to go there. And every soul who goes to hell is a soul for whom Christ died and shed his blood. Jesus died on the old rugged cross. And nobody has to go to the punishing fires of hell. Why does there have to be a punishing fire? Because God has done everything to save us all. And He's not going to allow you to live your own life and trample over the blood of Jesus and just say, everything's all right, just come on into heaven. It's not that way. Preachers nowadays may not ever preach on hell. But whether they preach on it or not, it's still God's Word. Heaven is sweet and we all talk about heaven. We want to go to heaven. But hell is real too. Our loved ones who are lost, if they don't get right with God, they'll die and go to hell. That punishing, everlasting, burning fire. They may not believe it. Whether they believe it or not, that doesn't make it so. doesn't make it not so. It's still real. The fire of hell is just as real as the prophetic and the prudential and the Pentecostal fire. All of it is real. Everybody wants to go to heaven. We want to be like a cat who went to heaven. Now I know some people don't think cats go to heaven, but whether you think they do or not, Mr. Cat died. He was such a good cat, they let him into heaven. And he got up there and he got to the gate and they asked him, what would you like? He said, well, I've always wanted somebody to bring my dinner to me. I've always had to go out and find food. I've had to go get rats and squirrels and all these kind of things to eat. I've always had to find me something to eat. I'd love for somebody just to bring me a meal. So he said, come on in. I think we can manage that. And lo and behold, here comes a rat. Now, I know you don't think the rats go to heaven. The rats are so filthy and nasty. Somehow or another, this rat got into heaven. And they asked that rat and said, well, we'll let you in. I don't know how successful it'll be, but what do you think you'd like to have? He said, well, I've had to go on these little feet everywhere I've gone. I would like to have a pair of roller skates. I think we can manage that. Come on in. So here lays Mr. Kitty. And all of a sudden comes Mousy. He pounces on Mousy and he eats him up. Oh, then they come and check on Mr. Kitty, how are things going? Things are going real good. Did you get your meal? He said, yeah, but I didn't ever think it was going to be meals on wheels. <laughs> now, I don't know if we need to pray after that or just stand up and go home. <laughs> I mean, after all, after talking about hell fire, you got to do a little light. <laughs> Let's stand, please. I thank God that I don't have to go to hell. Even if the preacher preaches on hell, I can get happy about it because I'm not going. And that's not selfish. That's just rejoicing in my salvation. I don't have anything that anybody else can't have. Except my wife. You can't have her. But Talking about in Jesus. Anything that we have in Jesus, anybody can have it. You Pentecostals think you're this and that. No, we don't think we're anything. We know we're nothing. Anything that we have, it comes through Jesus. And anything that we have, any other believer can have. All you have to do is believe. Father, thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. Thank you for the word that encourages our hearts, and lifts our spirits, and causes us to rejoice in our salvation. Lord, I praise you for every blessing that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you, Lord, for the fire of your word that causes us to be purified and to be holy and to live the way you'd have us to live. I pray your blessing upon each one. And may many come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ so that they would not have to go to that awful place called hell. In Jesus' name, amen. The preceding message has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries. 